And no. every single one of these seven basic statistics to keep track of, the whole idea is to lead to profit. Right. Hey everybody, Abby Johnson here with Matterhorn Business Development. We are business mentors helping you with free business videos every week. So subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. So I'm joined as always with Greg Winteregg, our CEO, who happens to be my father. I let him be the CEO of the company. <laughs> <laughs> and it took me a long time to convince her to let me do that, by the way. <laughs> so today, um, we've talked about a lot of previous subjects leading up to this, so make sure you start at the beginning of this playlist if you haven't already. But today we're gonna be talking about monitoring results and we're gonna give you the seven key statistics or KPIs or whatever you wanna call metrics. them. Metrics. Metrics, <laughs> whatever fancy word you wanna use. We're gonna give you the seven numbers that you need to be tracking to monitor your results. So first of all, why is it important to be keeping track of statistics and monitoring your results? Well, here's what's interesting. Um, like I, I graduated from dental school in 81 and I find my CPA and I sit down with her and we're talking about, well, this is what I'm gonna do, and every quarter you're gonna get a profit and loss statement, and we're gonna do all these comparisons. And so I get this profit and loss statement and I've never seen one before. Mm -hmm. In the restaurant business, we didn't keep track of that, mm -hmm. right? So I called her up on the phone, I'm like, hey, I got this thing in the mail, uh, we need to meet so I know what I'm looking at. And when I sat down with her, she was kind of stunned. She's like, you know, I'm really happy that you called me to do this because I know there's a lot of people that pay me for this and they put it in a drawer and never look at it. Right. So the irreducible minimum is sit down with your accountant and understand what the profit and loss statement is telling you. Right. Right. So that's, that's like very bare, that's bare, bare, bare minimum. The irreducible yeah. minimum because you're probably <laughs> paying for it. Well, and now with QuickBooks, you can generate one and it doesn't it's, cost yeah, you anything. exactly. But then, as far as what we're talking about with monitoring results, that tells you nothing. Right. It really doesn't. So, the, the business activities are broken down by marketing, leads generated, new customers, sales, um, how much product went out the door. So, you have to monitor these key performance indicators. You have to monitor with numbers what's happening on a weekly basis. Because you need to know what's working or not working. Like exactly. We spent thousands of dollars on Facebook ads, but we got no new leads. Hmm, something's wrong there. Like right. you need to be able to, to look and assess quickly if what you did in the last week was good or bad. And just seeing a number on a piece of paper doesn't do it. Right. It doesn't do it. Oh, this number looks like that. I'm telling you, if you have graph paper mm -hmm. with dots on it and lines connecting the yep. dots, the trend is immediately evident. Right. I have a chiropractic client that I'm we've been working with now for over a year mm -hmm. and their numbers are through the roof and interestingly enough last year in November the new patients just fell off the table now the typ typical response is oh it's Thanksgiving oh people are headed into the holidays they're in Minnesota so oh people are going to Florida and you have all this I'm like nope we're not accepting any of that these new patients are crashed for a reason mm -hmm. it took us two weeks to figure it out mm -hmm. and I just kept digging they were digging, and we found out that by accident, the direct mail quit going four right. weeks earlier. But you caught this sooner. You might not have realized it, especially if it was the end of the year, they right. might not have realized it until they did their taxes, and right. then we're like, wait In a April. minute. <laughs> right. Right. right, right. So these are numbers that have to be monitored by the week, Yeah. and you need to see a trend that is gradually rising. A flat trend is not good. Mm -hmm. That means you're flat and there's inflation. So a flat trend means you're going backwards. Mm -hmm. So if you just have like a few key ideas in your mind, you want the statistics to be trending up, not flat and not down. And if it's flat or down, then you need to do something about it. Right. So what we're gonna do today, um, we've partnered with a great company called Envisage. That's who we use to keep track of our statistics. We have all of our clients sign up with them. Um, it's like $20 a month. It's 
really nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can input your numbers and keep track of your own statistics. They get put on a graph. You can look at them weekly, monthly, daily if you want to. There's a link in the description box below where you can sign up for Envisage. And when you sign up, there's already going to be these seven key graphs that are going to be there already for you. So we're going to go over those graphs. Even if you don't sign up for Envisage, these are the bare minimum what you can yep. be keeping track of. You could have 60, but <laughs> these are just seven. And maybe they aren't completely perfect for your industry, but these are some bare bones numbers that you should be looking at. Exactly. So we're going to look at marketing first. So we have two for the marketing area. One is all mail out. Mm -hmm. So now in the digital age, this might have to be swapped. But the idea of this is how many how much have you been reaching out into your community, into your area? Yes. How many touches have you had? How many mailing pieces? Mm -hmm. right. We have clients who complain about whether well, or not getting any new customers. Mm -hmm. They say, well, how much are you advertising? How, how many emails went out? Even how, how many, many letters? How many letters went yeah. out to your existing customers? And the, the answer oftentimes is zero. Oh, or we don't, we don't I do don't that. know. Or I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Or I can't afford to do that. Or there, so, so let's just think about this. There's no advertising whatsoever. Mm -hmm. All right, well, then you're not going to get any new business. It's just right. going to happen by accident. But then even if you are doing advertising, you need to be monitoring, monitoring how much. Mm -hmm. Because then it's going to directly affect your income. And that way, if you're monitoring it and you're seeing it on the graph and you see a dip, then you should anticipate a dip in your income. Mm -hmm. So that's why monitoring how much marketing is going out is very crucial. Yep, and then if the marketing is going out and the number of new customers is not going up, then something's wrong something's with wrong. marketing. Yeah, either the marketing isn't working or the leads are coming in and nobody's closing them. I feel like so. we're giving away our best secrets right now. <gasps> Delete all of that. <laughs> Edit Cut. all of that out. Cut. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> because one of the one of the statistics you have to keep track of is new customers. Right. So that's the next one. Um, you don't say. Well, it's leads <laughs> in, so it's not closed people. Right. But it's how many leads are coming right. in from your marketing. So that's obviously going to tell you if all of this marketing you're sending out is working, or maybe. Uh, it was working for a while and something changed mm -hmm. and now your leads in have gone down. So I think you're probably getting the idea by now of how just looking at this on a graph, you can immediately spot what's out in yep. your company. Even if you're a one, one man or one woman show, you can yep. immediately spot what happened that might have made your income go down. So, so far we have amount of marketing out, mm -hmm. which gives us how many leads in. Right. And now, next we have new customers. So we have a couple sales statistics. Oh, that's right. So we have this to have might, some closes. Yeah, this might not be right for everyone's sales mm -hmm. process, but what we have set up here for you is um, number of prospect interviews. Mm -hmm. So if you're going out and giving quotes, if you're having a discovery call with someone, um, if you're a product-based business, like an online e-commerce store, this might not apply to you. This is for someone who you, mm -hmm. you need to be actively selling one-on-one. -on -one. So that's number of prospect interviews and the number of prospects closed is mm -hmm. this, the next one. So that way you can see, oh, I did 100 interviews, but I only closed one person. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. You need to work on your sales. You work on your sales or you're getting the wrong prospects from your marketing. Some, yeah, something needs to change. But see, the, the thing here, th this is not rote. This is not mechanical. This is definitely not robotic. And this is why you need to take a look at these numbers and you can't ever get reasonable and say, oh, it's just the summer, oh, it's, everybody's on vacation or it's Christmas and nobody does blah, blah. So these numbers mean something and you have to be able to think with them and, and mm -hmm. come up with a business strategy yep. based on these results. Yep. So then next is income. Mm -hmm. The all income, how much money did you make that week? We've already talked about all of these are connected with income and yep. can help you if you notice your income is down. You go look at these other stats and mm -hmm. see why it was down that week. 
Yeah, so if you think about it, income over here, and there's this whole process that's supposed to lead to income, and if there's no income, then something's missing. Right. And if you start looking at the graph paper, and you'll see a number that just like dives off the bottom, and if a number dives off the bottom over here this week, then in two or three weeks, a number over here is gonna dive off the bottom because they're, they're right. all related. Right. Yeah, this is not, it really isn't rocket science, but it's very basic stuff that you have to do. So next is about the actual delivery of your product mm -hmm. or service. And this again is different. Um, so it's the actual dollar value of your product or services that you delivered in that week. If you're a plumber and you did $500 worth of plumbing, whether you collected that money or not, right. you, you count that on this statistic. Mm -hmm. So this serves um, a few different purposes. If you're the kind of company that invoices out you do your work first, then invoice out, this statistic is definitely gonna be a prediction of your income. Yep. If it's the other way around and you are collecting money before a good or service is delivered, this is gonna show you if you aren't actually delivering and doing what you said you're gonna do, mm -hmm. which is not good because right. you're gonna get a bad reputation, which Neil and I just talked about <laughs> recently in another video. Well, and also the, the amount of services that you are providing versus income, it's really common that we see people are providing a service up here and they're only making this much money because they're not invoicing, they're not following up, they're afraid to ask for the money, there's something wrong. Mm -hmm. So this is a very, very critical graph. The other part of this, which I don't see as often but have seen, is income up here is up here and the product or service delivered is down here. This means you're taking in more money than what you're delivering and you're just setting yourself up for refunds, uh, bad Google reviews, right. et cetera. So you need to compare your income with your product delivered or right. services delivered. We even have a, a client in the cleaning industry who was, you know, he cleans and then gets paid after, right. and he was delivering so much, and these places, certain places weren't paying him, and he cut them off as clients. He yep. had to make that decision, like, right. look, I'm paying my staff, we're doing this hard work, and you're not paying, like, he can look at these graphs and make that decision, exactly. which has helped him immensely, actually. Tremendously. Yep. So then the final statistic we have here is for you as an owner, to, you need to keep track of. <laughs> and if you've watched any of our videos, you probably won't be surprised, but it's profit. If you aren't making profit, you yourself aren't going to be surviving. And you're just going to be running yourself into yep. the ground, working your butt off and not getting rewarded for your We hard just work. met with a new client last week who's been in business for a year and the employees are making more than the owner. Yeah. So that's not good. Right. That's not good. So this is, this is a bit of a painful graph to monitor. But Especially if it goes negative, yeah. which. That means you're putting money in. Yep. Minus profit means you're having to lend the company Take money. Loans, Take maybe loans, maybe if you yourself aren't. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So then if you if you take a look and if you've read my book, heard of my book, watched any of my videos on profit, is like that's the only reason to be open. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're servicing the public. You're taking care of your customer. But then why are you in business? You're in business to make money. You have to be in business to make a profit. And so this graph must be kept. And if you kind of look at at these seven statistics that we've got, we want to end up at profit, but then we're starting down here with how much mail is going out. Yeah. And no. every single one of these seven basic statistics to keep track of, the whole idea is to lead to profit. Right. But, and just think of it, if one of these pieces is missing, the assembly line is broken. Right. And if you see one of these numbers tank and drop off the graph, you know that the, the rest of the assembly line is about to break. Right. And if you've watched our previous videos about strategic planning and action plans, this is how you can tell if your action plans and strategic plans are actually working or mm -hmm. if you need to go back, write a new one, change yep. something. This is how you know when you need to change things or keep doing things. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to be keeping these. So just, just as a final comment, uh, every week 
I look at the statistics and take a look. Is the strategic plan working or not working? Mm -hmm. If it's working, we continue to roll it out and do things to nudge it along. If it's not working, we need to like take that plan, shred it, right. start over, come up with a new strategic plan, new action plan, but we don't do any of this on emotion. We don't sit around, uh, Abby and Neil and I say, hey, so how do you think it's going? What do you think is happening? It's right. like, well, here's how much money we made, here's how many leads we closed, et cetera. So every week you have to take a look at your statistics. And this is exactly what we do with our one-on-one -on -one elite mentoring program. Mm -hmm. So if you want our help, all of our information is in the description box below, the link to envisage is going to be down there um, so that you can start monitoring your own statistics you don't necessarily need us to do it mm -hmm. but i highly encourage you go sign up and start keeping these seven basic numbers of course make sure you go buy greg's book fun at work <laughs> this whole process <laughs> is laid out in the book and we'll see you next time on our business startup series